Okay, before we dig in on this one, I just want to say a couple of little things. This episode is not intended to make somebody a better criminal or turn them into a criminal. The things I'm going to show you in this episode are designed to show you what some of the skills the trade captain, trade craft of an undercover should have. Now, if you're dumb enough to go try these things on the street and you get caught, you get locked up, which I hope you do if you, tr if you try it, then that's on you. All I'm trying to show you is the world of an undercover that very few people ever get to see. Okay guys, today what we're going to do is show some of the skills needed by an undercover that in the business we call trade craft. That includes lock picking. I'm going to show you how to steal a motorcycle and we're going to talk about a few other small skills that you should have if you really want to be a good undercover. Okay, so now in the undercover world, you know, you got to have the tools to make things happen. This here is my personal set of lock picking tools. Um, it's far from complete, but what we're going to do here in a little bit is we're going to take a standardized paddle lock, one that might be locking up a shed or a garage or something to that's housing a motorcycle. And I want to get in there and I want to steal that motorcycle. So the first line of defense is one of these padlocks. Um, I've covered up any of the name brand on any of the locks that I'll be using today simply because one, I don't want anybody to be able to know what tool I'm using for what type of lock. And, uh, you know, it's one of those things. I will tell you this. I will not do any video cuts. Once I start lock picking, um, I'm going to show you in real time what it takes me to get into that lock. That way you have a good understanding of what it takes to be a good undercover in the training that you have to pass. Okay, I got my lock, which is locked. I have my torsion wrench and I have my pick. Now what I do is first thing I do is get that uh, torsion wrench in there, still locked, and then I get my pick in there, I apply pressure, and that's how long it takes me to get into one of the locks. So if your motorcycle is on the inside of this shed that I just picked into, now I'm going to be able to steal your motorcycle. Okay people, what we're about to do here is steal a 2003 Harley Davidson Softail. One of the most popular brands Harley Davidson ever made was the Softail. And it's also, conversely, guess what? One of the most stolen models of motorcycle out there. Now, Harley's probably going to get mad at me for this, but they do a piss poor job of trying to prevent people from stealing motorcycles. And I'm going to tell you why. Actually, I'm going to show you why. Okay, you have two locking setups on a Harley. This is your first one. It's the fork assembly lock. Okay, and then of course your second one is your ignition lock. And you have a little tumbler uh, tube lock inside of that ignition. To be able to get through both of these locks, this is what you need to do. And it's very simple. This lock here has nylon or plastic tumblers, if you will, uh, lock rings inside. And all you need to do to get past this lock is crank the, the handlebars. Sometimes it takes two people or one good strong guy it's, uh, but you'll snap the inner locks, the inner rings of that lock. Then what you need to do to be able to start it. Now I have the ability to drive this thing. I can turn the, the, the handlebars. But what I need to do is be able to start it. 
So to be able to start this thing, I grab my universal key, pair of channel locks, and I go until you hear the click. Again, the locking mechanism inside of the Harley Davidson Softtails, they're made of nylon and you can break them. Once you break them, they are free to go. It's just like you have the key. Now the only thing left to get past is the security system. Now if that particular motorcycle has a security system, which pretty much everything from about 98 on, really they do. Uh, some are better than others, but uh, to be able to get past the security system, I'm not going to tell you or show you every single step to do that, but I will tell you this. Almost, not all, almost all Harley Davidsons come with a PIN number to override the security system that comes on the bike. Unless the owner switches it, and many, many do not switch it out of either ignorance of not knowing that they're supposed to or that they even can, but Harley pre-programs all the PIN numbers as 31313. So if you know how to operate the security system of a Harley Davidson and you punch in the 31313, it overrides the security system. Um, and that's done with the turn signals. There's a, a boatload of videos out there uh, that you can watch on how to override systems and things like that. And I will tell you, if you get the wrong year with the wrong system, you're not gonna be able to do it. So you kinda have to know what your bike you're looking at and immediately know what type of security system it is that that bike would have and the coating for that bike. Like I say, when I was deep undercover, um, this was one of my specialties. I became very proficient at stealing motorcycles. Some of the other things a good undercover should have, you should be close, if not an expert in small firearms. As in the last episode of Gunplay, it showed you a very few of the weapons that I dealt with. You know, you have M4, AR-15s, shotguns of all different calibers. There's so many small arms out there that a person should be an expert in or real close to an expert in. Another thing an undercover should know is if you're dealing in the world of narcotics, you should know the weights and measures. You should know what a gram looks like. You should know what a gram feels like. You should know how to use a scale. You should know how to test various narcotics without actually using narcotics. You should know how to fake using narcotics. A good undercover is a good actor. Number one skill in my opinion on a, a good undercover is being able to read people. If you can do that, your job will be a whole lot easier. There's so many things in the trade craft and an undercover that I would never be able to cover all those things in a video series. I just want to throw a few things out there and, you know, give you a little insight that uh, very few people ever get to see. Thanks for tuning in. Stay safe. Be kind to each other. And we'll see you in the next video.